Hello once again, wrestling fans, and welcome to Off the Top Rope Radio, heard worldwide on KQCK radio stations. I'm your host, Brian Shank, and in the next hour, we'll discuss all that is professional wrestling. You'll hear the latest news, informative interviews with the biggest stars in the business, and maybe even a few surprises along the way. It all starts right now on KQCK radio stations, USA and Costa Rica. And we are live once again. Today is Wednesday, March the 12th, the year 2014. We're glad to have you on board. Welcome to Off the Top Rope Radio, ladies and gentlemen, professional wrestling fans of all ages. We welcome you. We hope you're enjoying your evening so far because we've got a fantastic program lined up for you. And like I said, my name is Brian Shank. I'm the host of the program, like always, right here on Off the Top Rope Radio, heard exclusively on KQCK.com. That is USA Costa Rica radio station, streaming worldwide, also playing 24-7 great music and great talk shows, just like this one right here, Off the Top Rope Radio, professional wrestling talk at its finest. Well, maybe at least somewhat good. Based on some of the emails and some of the comments we got from you really enjoying the show, we do appreciate that. And if you're tuning us in on the video screen, you can see we got a brand new setup there. We got some uh, bright colors here. We added some of the different wrestlers right here. We got Mr. Daniel Bryan. We got Jeff Hardy, Kurt Angle, Duff the Road, the American Dream, baby. I go to the pay window. Nobody fails out Charlotte like the American Dream. And uh, Hulk Hogan, what you gonna do, brother? And uh, Mr. Ric Flair, woo! We got them all right there lined up. Got the NWA, the AW logo, the WWE logo up there, and of course the email at the very, very top right there, brian at kqckradio.com. If you'd like to send us an email at any time during the show, we'll be happy to get that up there and get it live and uh, read your comments and everything else. So please feel free to do so and email us at any time during the program. Since taking the phone calls is a little bit hard since we do do, we do a lot of phone segments and whatnot here on the show. But again, if you want to send us an email at any time during the program, just send it to Brian, B-R-I-A-N, the correct way to spell it, at kqckradio.com. And we'd love to have you on the uh, your question, at least, on the air here and everything else. Well, we had the big pay-per-view last week. We had uh, TNA and, um, well... I'm I'm gonna just kind of leave it in the uh, in the backfield right now because uh, it was uh, well it was TNA lockdown it was kind of a lackluster 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 pay per view in my opinion a lot of things went wrong we thought we were gonna see Team MVP take on Team Dixie Carter in a spectacular match and, you know the match itself was pretty damn good I mean the four on four was pretty good uh, the big main event match with Magnus. And Samoa Joe, not so good. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in detail. Of course, the WWE making strides with its road trip towards WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans, Louisiana. So that should be a hell of a pay-per-view. It's shaping up nicely, and I hope they do what I uh, want them to do, and that is, of course, bring in, in a three-way match Daniel Bryan, um, Mr. Batista, or as they've been calling him, Bautista, and Randy Orton. And if I see one more person on the internet or any place else spell Orton, O-R-T-A-N, I'm going to scream. I mean, it just, it, it bothers me. I don't want to see Orton spelled that way. It's not Orton. It's not Ortan. It's Orton. So anyway, so let's go ahead and bring on our guest here that we have every single week. He's a good friend of mine and uh, always adds a really nice element to the show. He's my good buddy, Doug McDonald, live via satellite from uh, maybe not so cold anymore, south cold anymore, South Carolina. But he's joining us right now on Off the Top Rope Radio. What's up, Doug McDonald? That's right, buddy. It's gotten warm. The sun is out, and I told you so. Daniel <laughs> Bryan, Triple H, yep. has a match. Stipulation on the match. Mm-hmm. If he beats Triple H, he gets put in a triple threat. Yep. That's what we're going to see, yeah. and I'm excited. I'm excited, too, because going into this pay-per-view, Doug, as we talked about, we were not really too sure on how well it would be you know, perceived and received by the wrestling fans. And based on what we've heard on the Internet and some of the things you've brought up to the show and everything else and some of the stuff I've received and everything, it's like they weren't real happy about this. I think the WWE was banking on Batista to have a really huge return, which he did. The crowd went nuts and everything else, and uh, it just kind of fell flat, I think, a little bit. Maybe the expectations weren't met, and then they started to kind of turn on him pretty quickly, which may or may not happen with Bobby Lashley over in TNA. Now, we'll talk about that later, but uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, this should be a good three-way main event, because I'll tell you what, that match with the Big Show and Daniel Bryan 
and Batista and Orton on Monday Night Raw this past week was phenomenal. Very good match. A lot of great heat, a lot of false finishes. We saw Batista and Orton kind of clashing with each other. We saw the big spear Batista gave Orton kind of set up the victory for Daniel Bryan to win this match. And I think he's on a roll. People are way on him. And let's talk about particularly last Monday night because great match. Nice way to set it up going into WrestleMania. Give us your thoughts on that particular event. Monday Night Raw was awesome. And the fact that they, what I said a couple weeks ago with Chicago, the way that they hijacked the hijack movement. Right. They did, they did it again this past Monday night. This Chicago. time, they went all out. There's 50 to 60 guys in the ring with Daniel Bryan. Yep. <clears throat> occupying Raw. Yep. So basically, they just, they, they've taken this whole fan movement to, you know, the movement, if you will, for Daniel Bryan and just turned it on the fans. Which is brilliant, and it, but, it, but it set up exactly what we've been waiting for since SummerSlam. Yep. That's for play for Daniel Bryan, for Daniel Bryan to prove that he's an A-plus player. And when he proves that he is, we get him in the title match, and hopefully 70,000-plus 70, 70, in New Orleans on April, 7, on April 6th are going to be standing yet as WrestleMania goes off the air. Now, let me ask you a question, Doug, because I don't know if this makes any difference or not, but, you know, Daniel Bryan ha- has held the championship there in the WWE at one time, and it was pretty much taken away from him in 18 seconds. Um, is this going to hurt him at all, or has, has this been, like, totally brushed under the table because they're not even bringing up any kind of acknowledgement that he was once a heavyweight champion in the WWE? Is this going to be brought up at all or made any kind of difference whatsoever? Well, they, they've been acknowledging that Triple H screwed him out of the title twice. Right, I mean, right. they definitely acknowledge that. Yeah. So, my, my thing is, no, this is not going to hurt him. This is what everyone has been waiting for. Mm-hmm. This is what every fan online has been bitching and moaning about for the last <laughs> four months. Yeah. Because they don't have any patience to see a long-term storyline come to fruition. Yeah. <clears throat> and now, we get it. Now, you get exactly what you want. All the fans that I know that were complaining about what the WrestleMania card looked like, even though there were still five weeks filled going into it. Right. We're just bitching and moaning. Now are super stoked and excited about the card, yeah. as they should have been, mm. with just a little bit of patience. Mm. It just takes a little bit of patience. It's, it's storytelling. It is professional. Uh, you have to have patience. This, this I want it now type of world that we live in, not good for this. No, and you know, the thing is, too, is that you talked about, you know, being in a, in a quick fix, you know, kind of putting the match together so quickly. I remember back in the day, I mean, people like Tommy Rich and Buzz Sawyer, I mean, they had a two-year feud, for crying out loud. You know, I mean, who would ever think even a two-month feud nowadays would even be taking place? It, it's just not something that usually happens. Um, but I agree with you, and and... Maybe now it's like, okay, they've taken their time, they've really kind of come together, and now they're giving the people what they want. And I really do hope that it does follow through at WrestleMania to where we do see Daniel Bryan win the heavyweight championship because I think now it really needs to, the WWE really needs to have that good, big, baby face, all on board, Hulk Hogan-esque type of champion. Because let's think about it. Besides really John Cena, I mean, and even, you know, at times John Cena is such a uh, a 50-50 hit or miss kind of guy with the uh, crowd in a lot of times at the arenas, they haven't really had that big, super way over, true-to-form babyface champion that I think they can have with Daniel Bryan. Yeah, we're going to see just how how much he remains the number one guy. We're going to see just how the crowd really react to Daniel Bryan being the champion. Right. You know, I know that this a lot of his popularity has been due to the chase. Mm-hmm. So when he gets the title, we'll see how pay per view sales go and merchandise sales go and all that stuff for him. I mean, I think we talked about this on Wrestling Rumors Radio. We think that uh, there's just as much to look forward to if he wins the title and then you have the authority to try to take the title back off him yeah. by just throwing every heel that they can think of at him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's just much gain from that as there has been to gain this case. So mm-hmm. we got a good we got a, a good good little uh, good little era coming up ahead of us with Brian as champion. I'm 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 looking forward to seeing what we get out of this product going forward towards SummerSlam. 
I agree with you on that. And I think that Daniel Bryan would make a fine champion based on what he's all about. And that is that he's way over with the fans. And I think that uh, come WrestleMania should be interesting. Now, switching gears a little bit away from Daniel Bryan and staying with the Raw program, um, we saw John Cena in a match against uh, one of the Wyatts. And then we saw at the end, you know, basically him and Hogan in the ring celebrate and everything else, and he's, you know, standing by. And the two whites jumped up on the uh, apron. Bray told him to go get him. He said no. He held back, whatever else. And then it kind of, like, played off like the chicken, you know, the chicken uh, heel type of thing, which, you know, has worked very successfully over the past 50 years or so in professional wrestling. Um, where do you think, Doug, we're going to go with this program? I mean, I, I know that WrestleMania is supposed to be Bray Wyatt versus John Cena, and it should be a pretty decent match. They're building it up nicely, and I think the crowd is getting into it. But uh, do you think there's any kind of other involvement that we should look out for with Hulk Hogan in this? Because this always kind of has something to do with Hulk Hogan. Whether If he's involved in something, even if it's just like a guest appearance ringside for John Cena on a Monday Night Raw, it usually turns into something else because, hey, He's Hulk Hogan. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, they teased it Monday night. Um, I don't think they're going to go with a match. I don't think Hulk Hogan's going to no. actually be competing at no. WrestleMania 30. No, but I think no. that he'll probably do exactly what he did Monday night and stay at John Cena's court. Mm-hmm. Try to you know, keep the Wyatt family from, from getting involved in this match. I'm excited about John Cena Bray Wyatt. This is the first time in 10 years John Cena has not been fighting either in the main event or for the major title for WrestleMania. Yeah. He is backing out of the main event spot to put Bray Wyatt over because that character and his in ring ability is awesome. And they the, the crowd is so hot on, on the on the Wyatt in the shield right now. Yeah. And if, if Bray Wyatt doesn't matter if Bray Wyatt wins or loses the WrestleMania, this is a little bit rough from your new Hulk Hogan John Cena. Yeah, you're breaking up just a little bit there. I'm trying to see if it has anything to do with our side or you, but uh, um, you know the thing is, is that I, I look at WrestleMania this year, and I know a lot of people are not really all jacked up about it. I mean, it's going to be in a great facility there in New Orleans at the uh, Superdome. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? It should be a fantastic weekend, spectacular, and. I guess that you we're going back a little bit to what you said earlier about you know the people wanting something done so quickly and whatnot. And I, I remember back in the eighties when we'd watch WrestleMania. And you'd, you know they only had the three or four of the pay per views back then. I mean Royal Rumble wasn't really an issue at the time, but you had WrestleMania, and you had Survivor Series, you had SummerSlam, and it gave them so much time to build up towards those pay per views. I mean, me and Gene would have the segments every single week on Superstars or Challenge, and it would go into great detail. And by the time like two months away from the pay per view. They had a full card of what was going to happen on that uh, on that event or whatever else. It's not like that anymore, and I know a lot of people are, are wishing that it could be like that, but it's not. I mean, when they got a pay-per-view every single month, I mean, they've got to kind of hot shot it to where they can get to a certain area and say, okay, we got to do this, we got to do that, we got to push it here, blah, 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 boom. And, and I understand that. The big ones like WrestleMania and SummerSlam and Survivor Series and Royal Rumble, they've got to play a little bit more on that, but... Uh, Going into WrestleMania, I mean, can we see something with maybe like the Tag Team Championship? Will there be an Intercontinental Championship Championship match? I mean, uh, is there a U.S. Champion still out there? I mean, what what else can we expect for WrestleMania 30? I think what we're going to see, uh, Hulk Hogan obviously announced on Raw that there will be a Andre the Giant third man battle royal. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's going to take a lot of the mid parters. Um, the IC champion, Mid Yi, is in this battle. So we're not going to see the IC title up for grabs at WrestleMania. It's weird, but we're not going to see it. Yeah. We are going to see the tag titles, though, I do believe. I believe we see the Outlaws and the Usos go at it again. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Buzz Brothers, Triple Threat. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about Dustin Rhodes, uh, I can call him Dustin Rhodes, Goldust, uh, eventually turning on Cody or whatever else, leading up to a WrestleMania match, but I know that Dustin went on record by saying, this is not going to happen, you know, it's, it's not going to be, It's we're scrapping that idea, blah, 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 uh, he doesn't want to break up with his brother on camera, he likes the chemistry, and I, and I like the fact that they have a very formidable tag team with them, and they've actually got three or four decent tag teams in the WWE that are established, not just two guys teaming up to you know to hold the belts like that. And I'd like to see the Rhodes brothers continue on as 
uh, a, an active tag team out there and really compete back and forth. They don't have to turn heel to go against the Usos because the Usos are full-on baby faces. But, I mean, they could have matches against each other, and I would welcome the idea of bringing in some other guys. That's why I wish I would have liked to have seen the American Wolves join the WWE title ranks, that tag team title ranks. That would have been some phenomenal matches as well. So, I don't know. I, the IC title not being defended at WrestleMania, ugh, it kind of hurts because one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time was for the IC title back at WrestleMania three at the Pontiac Silverdome. Yeah, great match. I mean, I remember I interviewed Ricky Steamboat about that match on the show, and for you longtime fans of the show, you obviously remember this. But he, you know, he talked about how he would basically work out the match with Randy, and they had mm-hmm. index cards with a with the move on it with the number next to it. So like, you know, be so like, you know, be like, oh, "What's move number 17?" You know, it's a you know, a step over toe hold. Oh, give me number 29. You know, it's a snap suplex. All right, how about 56? You know, body slam off the I mean, it was like that. It was that impressive and and so tight and everything. So it kind of saddens me that that belt is kind of not being looked at as a major championship anymore and but you know, hey, that's how things happen in wrestling. I guess things evolve. So, but uh, you're going down to WrestleMania, aren't you? You're going. Yes, I am. Okay, I'm I'm about ninety percent. So if I do, I may need a ride since you're driving. I may need to hook up with you and uh, I mean not a ride out there because I I don't expect you to drive out to Phoenix from South Carolina to drive to drive back to New Orleans. But I mean I'd fly there. But I mean you know I may need to just say hey pick me up here let's go do this. <laughs> so that works. Yeah, we'll do that it. Works, we'll, either way, if I go, you know we're gonna get together and crack some beers open. We're gonna definitely do that. That's for damn sure. Okay, we'll do that. And in case you're just tuning in, we're talking to Doug McDonald live via satellite. He's a senior editor of WrestlingRumors.net, a very fine wrestling website. If you want all your news and information, go check it out. And if you're on Facebook, and who isn't, join their page, like their page, get involved on WrestlingRumors.net. You'll get these updates in your news page, your news feed. Uh, It's always a nice big picture, so it captures you. And as soon as you see that picture, you know there's something going on. Right below it is the link. Always some breaking news with uh, WrestlingRumors.net. Go check it out. Don't be a fool. Go look at it. Is there anything else you want to cover on WWE before we switch over to the TNA debacle? No. I know. You, we covered it, man. I'm excited about WrestleMania. That's what we've covered. Yeah, I am, I, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to it more and more every day, too. But uh, one last thing before we switch over. Uh, what are your thoughts, and I guess I should ask you, who were these people in the WrestleMania mob that uh, was taking place for Daniel Bryan? I mean, who were those people? Were they hired hands? I mean, was it people that uh, were in the audience and they gave them T-shirts? I mean, we've heard a lot of rumors and reports about it, and that's why we're asking you, Doug McDonald. Who were those people? Okay, uh, some of them were full fans. Uh, they pulled out some of the military fans that were in at ringside. Right on. Uh, put shirts on them, put them in the ring. Um, even the the infamous sign guy, <laughs> WWE fans every event, he got pulled into the ring. Um but about 50 or I think 35 to 40 of them were actual staffers for WWE. Okay. Airing, um, stage hands, mm-hmm. assistant, writers, that kind of deal. Cool. Cool. Well, I'm glad they got the military involved. I know WWE is very, very sound when it comes to the military personnel out there, the fine men and women who defend this awesome country known as the United States of America, and they're always on their side, just like myself, and I, uh, I, I love the fact that they incorporate them in some way, shape, or form, and if I'm not mistaken, doesn't the military personnel, if they're in town like that, don't they get free admission to all the WWE events? I believe they do. Well, I don't know about free. It might be discounted heavily, but I know that they try to get them at ringside because heard, it looks good. I heard. I heard free. Well, I, yeah, it does look good. Obviously, it is. yeah, it's a it's a good promo. It's a good promotional event. I mean, obviously, to get you yeah. know the people in there. I mean, let's not let's not sugarcoat it. It's always a great little marketing plea. But hey, you know what you're talking about? You're talking about our fine men and women in the military, and God bless them all. And I, I always pray for them every day and keep them safe and everything else. So let's switch over to TNA lockdown. We saw the pay per view. Um, the main event was not bad. Team MVP, I thought it was decent, a good match. Um, we now right. show we now show that we do have control with MVP as the main guy and whatnot. Now this opens up a couple things. Number one, I think MVP now is going to start laying the smackdown, so to speak, on Magnus due to the way that we saw Abyss come in and interfere a la Big Show back in 19, 1998. So we'll see something develop, I think, with that now that he's in charge and we'll have something going. And then we're also going to see, I believe, a big demise and breakup 
with Robert Roode, Bobby Roode, whatever you want to call him, Austin Aries. Somewhere along there, we're going to see something happen where he'll be involved in the program as well. What do we? What are your thoughts about the pay-per-view itself, and what can we take away from the pay-per-view moving forward with TNA Wrestling? I'm going to start this off by saying I'm a fan of wrestling, and I want <laughs> TNA to succeed. Yeah. Because not just be one promotion that's big. And I know Jeff Jarrett's about to start one. Good for him. He did it with TNA. Let's see if he can get another company up, up and running and, and being awesome. Right. But TNA, TNA, the beginning of the pay-per-view was not bad. Um, I was actually enjoying it. Uh, Bastion Shaw, interesting match where it started to kind of get, eh, okay, not great. Then the championship match. With the worst attempt, that a Diesel Undertaker pull through job I have ever seen in <laughs> my life. And it instantly made me just piss off at the company. Because <laughs> whoever's writing, whoever booked that, needs to be fired. Really? You think they, fired? They wow. struggled so hard to even get the ring. I mean, Samoa Joe had to beat a hole in the ring. <laughs> I know. Just so, that, just so that he could go through the hole. It was and the fans. The, the 900 that were there, the 900 people. 900. Oh. Yikes. Were booing, but it wasn't heat on Magnus. They were booing because of what they were seeing. The performance was awful. Yeah. Yeah. Why have, why pull someone come through the ring only to let him come right back up? Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't pull down underneath the ring. You're supposed to stay there. Yeah. There was no point to what they did. Yeah. And the fans were pissed off at that point in, and that's why the main event was cricket. Mm-hmm. No yeah. one cared for Jeff Hardy when he kicked out at Willow the Whip. And Taz buried him in two characters as they came out comparing his tattoos to Jeff Hardy. And said he's Jeff Hardy. Yeah. So what's the point of bringing him for his new gimmick then? Yeah. And then, you know, he, he doesn't slip off the top of the cage. Nobody catches him. It's just poor performance then on. I mean, Bully Ray turned face on the same event that he turned heel at a year ago in cricket. Fans didn't say or cheer or do a thing. Mm-hmm. He powerbombed Bobby Roode through a table. And the crowd sat there in silence. And while they're being silent, Mike May, Zask and Taz, did you hear the roar of the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear the world the crowd because they're sitting there going, this is a crap event that I just admit. The fact that these two main events that poorly performed. And, and, you know, it's a real shame, too, because obviously TNA has been having some uh, better shows as of late on TV, From in my opinion. I mean, you know, a lot of people said, well, they got to get Hulk Hogan out of there. He's hogging up too much of the camera. He's he's too much of a, of a distraction. you got to get Dixie Carter out of there. Well, there was a time where there was no Hulk Hogan, and there was that one show where there was no Dixie Carter. And, I mean, the, the, the actual wrestling and the shows itself building towards a pay-per-view were pretty decent. I mean, i got to go back to the one show where Kurt Angle was getting his Hall of Fame watch. And I thought to myself, you know, hmm, this is kind of weird. You know, he's only in a, an arena, but the crowd was hot. It was kind of a cool setting with the lights down and everything else. He looked like he was genuinely uh, sincere and very, uh, uh, very much like a lump in his throat where he was just, you know, torn up inside. And Even though he's ready to be out of there, too. Well, he's going to probably be out there in September for what we've been reading. I mean, I don't know if it's totally true or not, but uh, what I'm saying is, though, is that the, the, the shows here recently have been, you know, pretty good in regards of having some good wrestling. I mean, and, and i got to give props to him on one thing. The Robert Roode, uh, the, uh, not the Robert Roode, the James Storm match with Gunner, I thought was very good. Very good. It, really, very really, good. really good. I mean, they, they busted their asses off inside that ring, and they were not really one of the top matches going into that. I mean, they were probably like the third most focused match on the card, and they tore it up. I mean, uh, now where do we go with James Roode and Gunner? I mean, where are we going to go with something like this? Are they going to continue on feuding? Will they say, hey, this is something we had to do to get it all out of us, now we go back as a team? I mean, there's a lot of weird things that could happen out of this particular match. No, I think that they could they could definitely keep that program going for a while. Um, yeah. These guys have a good chemistry together. Mm-hmm. That that match was probably the best match on the card. That and the Divas, the knockout match was awesome. Yes, yeah, it wasn't bad you know, at all. Saying that the knockout match is awesome. I mean, the knockout matches are their whips matches are always good. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, do you think that do you think the TN yeah do you think TNA is in trouble at all in terms of uh, you know 
having any problems here with eventually maybe you know having to close up shop because we keep hearing it. I mean, I don't know. We, uh, I mean, we've been predicting that they're out of business by the end of 2015, um, mainly because of uh, attendance and ticket sales. If they took their company overseas, they'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the American crowd just they're not buying it. They're they're not playing it anymore. Um I mean two thousand six when they're it was a more was a bigger focus on the actual hit ring competition. You know, it was hot. Yeah. I, I like one. A six sided ring, different. You got some good guys in there doing some good performances. Yep. I mean they still have talented guys. All these guys can wrestle. Like the American Wolves, who are incredible wrestlers, yes. are terrible for the microphone. Oh yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not very. Should good. never be able allowed. Should never be allowed to talk. And you can't. And it's the same thing with Usos. Usos are champions, but no one's connected to their characters because they can't present a character that connects the fans because they can talk. Yeah. No, you're right about that. I mean, I think that good wrestlers obviously have to be good inside the ring, and I think they also have to be pretty good behind the microphone. And that's why I also think that, you know, CM Punk is so successful in his career, and Daniel Bryan, for that matter. I mean, John Cena is not the greatest wrestler, but he's a hell of a person on the microphone, and he he knows how to say things and how to get your uh, attention. Because there's a lot of them that people don't really like John Cena at all. Obviously, that's very evident. But he goes with it. He knows how to play that on the microphone. I totally agree with you on that. So. Well, CM Punk's no longer CM Punk. He's still broke. That's what I've been hearing. I was going to let you know what. we got about two more minutes. Let's let's end the show with that because I had that on my note board right here. I want to ask you about that. Now, okay, he's supposed to be on Talking Dead. Now, see, I've never watched a whole episode of Walking Dead in my life. I may, I may be like the only person on the face of the earth that is not a Walking Dead fan. My wife loves it. My kids love it. They all watch that. They, they love it. I, I know people who talk about it all the time on Facebook. I never watch. I watch a little bit while they're watching, and I sit there and I go, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But this that's. Season sucked. I haven't watched it. Well, <laughs> regardless, I still don't get it. But anyway, he's supposed to be on this Sunday night, I guess, as Phil Brooks on Talking Dead, which I assume he's a big fan, obviously, if you're going to be on that show. Um, now, tell me about that, because that's what they've been saying. He's Phil Brooks now, which is his real given name. What's going on? Is this pretty much. The whole thing, because WWE does not own his name, right? He doesn't have the ownership rights to the WWE. Oh, I'm sure WWE owns the likeness trademark to CM Punk right now, and that's why, you know, if he was still with the company, he would be on that show as CM Punk. Oh, absolutely. This, this if anything, including the uh, the Shia Sonnen bit on TSN mm -hmm. that was released today. Right. These two instances where he was on the show and they asked about CM Punk, they asked if CM Punk would be competing at, competing at WrestleMania 30. Sonnen says, I don't know, but I do know who does know, and it's Stephanie McMahon, and he holds up a piece of paper with Stephanie McMahon's actual cell phone number. Stephanie McMahon's cell phone number? Yes, he holds it up and says, this is Stephanie McMahon's, there's no 555, this is her actual cell phone number. Wow. <laughs> You'll know. You can call and ask her because he's best friends with CM Punk. He's best friends with Phil Brooks. Yeah. So he said that and then said, oh, and you can tell Triple H that I just played the game. Wow. Those, that, along with him appearing on a live show this Sunday night, yeah. talking to at Brooks, should stop the marks on the internet saying that CM Punk is coming back before WrestleMania. I would think so. Matt, yeah. He's not coming back. Yeah. He's done. There's obviously bad blood there. If Sonin's doing that on live TV, there's there's an issue. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we'll see how it develops because obviously it's going to take its time. But we got to get rolling here. We got some more stuff to come with here. But first of all, before we go, what do you think about the new setup here with the uh, graphics and everything? You like that? That's great, man. I guess a, a super sexy. Senior editor of WrestlingRumors.net helped you out with well, that. Well, yeah, that that's you know that that part is 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 a given. You know what I mean? That's cool. But no, actually, I got to give credit to Doug McDonald for setting that up right there in the bottom corner there, uh, to your left. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, uh, Mr. Jeff Hardy, Daniel Bryan, and Kurt Angle. Uh, that's a cool little montage you set up for me, which I deeply, deeply and thank you appreciate. So, uh, yeah, that's good stuff. It's a nice, cleaner look. I, I, I like the way it came out and everything. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I'm pretty happy that you came on the show and kind of cleared everything up for us and talked about what's happening in the wrestling world. We'll have you back here next Wednesday, the 19th of March. We'll kind of talk more about the wrestling shows that are out there and what's happening. And uh, as usual, it's always a pleasure hearing from you, brother. 
Sounds good, man. I look forward to it. I'll catch you on the next one. Sounds good. Take care, buddy. All right. Thank you, buddy. Doug McDonald right there from WrestlingRumors.net. Uh, he's always got something good to say, and if you want to know all the information, all the coolest things out there in the wrestling world, you need to go to WrestlingRumors.net because that is where you need to be for all the updated information about the wrestling world. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff out there. All you got to do is go to WrestlingRumors.net, join them on Facebook, whatever it is, send them an email, You know, let them know that you guys like the show, whatever else, because that's where the news is at right there, WrestlingRumors.net. And this is where the news is at as well here. So we're going to come back in a few minutes here. We're going to have our very special guest this week, the Rock and Roll Express, baby. That's right, Robert Gibson and Ricky Morton in two separate interviews. We're going to pick their brains about the big Mid-South Legends event coming up in good old Chalmette, Louisiana. It's the weekend of WrestleMania 30, not very far far from the WrestleMania stopping grounds at the Mercedes-Benz Silverdome. Not the Silverdome, the Superdome. The Silverdome was up in Detroit. See, I was talking WrestleMania 3 and I got Silverdome on my head, but uh, we're coming right back and we'll talk more about that and we'll have Robert Gibson from the Rock and Roll Express right here on Off the Top Rope Radio. Don't go away. Are you having plumbing or septic problems? No worries. Call Cartwright's Queen Creek Plumbing and Septic Service. Been in the Valley since 1996, family owned and operated, proudly serving East Valley and surrounding areas. With a full range of services from drain cleaning, septic tank pumping, general maintenance and repairs, inspections for the sale of your home. They provide excellent and courteous service for all your plumbing and septic needs. We're not satisfied till you are satisfied. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Call today, Cartwrights. Queen Creek Plumbing and Septic Service. Contact Denise at 480-987-8051. That's 480-987-8051. AZ Computer Geeks is your local hometown go-to computer company. Focusing on providing comprehensive computer repair services for PC and Mac computers, desktops, and laptops. Working with individuals and businesses small and large with over 20 years of hands-on experience, AZ Computer Geeks technicians have many certifications and love what they do. Believing in 100% customer-satisfied service, you will get free diagnosis and professional quality individualized services for your needs. Growing on referrals, AZ Computer Geeks loves your feedback. Refurbished desktops and laptops available for sale. Also building custom systems to your specifications. Check out azcomputergeeks.com or call 480-729-8899. And we're back here at Off the Top Rope Radio on kqck.com. Heard exclusively on kqck.com, USA and Costa Rica radio stations, Off the Top Rope Radio here at Brian Schenk. We're glad to have you aboard here on this Wednesday, March the 12th, the year 2014. Uh, great uh, talk we just had there with Doug McDonald from WrestlingRumors.net about all the information that's going on in the professional wrestling world of today. But uh, right now, I want to bring on a good friend of mine, someone who's been an integral part of the show over the years and uh, always has something good to say about the wrestling business because he's pretty much wrestled everybody in the wrestling business at a time or two. And we're going to bring on, from the Rock and Roll Express, one half, he is Mr. Robert Gibson. What's up, Robert? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, man? It's been a while since I talked to you. It has been a while. You know, we haven't had you on the air for a couple of years here. I know we made some changes in the show and whatnot, but uh, it's good to hear your voice. It's good to have you on Off the Top Rope Radio here at Brian Shank, and uh, we're speaking to Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express. And Robert, the reason why I got you on today is, you know, we got a very big event coming up on Friday, April the 4th. It's the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest taking place at the Siger Center in Chalmette, Louisiana. We're going to talk about it in detail here, but first of all, have you wrestled in Chalmette before or anywhere nearby? I sure have. Man. I like going down there eating that Cajun food and <laughs> meeting all my Cajun fans down there. They're it's a really cool place to be. Right on. Yeah, I guarantee, man, there's a lot of great fans out there. You know, that's deep in the heart of Mid-South Wrestling, you know, and I remember back in the day, Mid-South, the TV shows were just so phenomenal to watch because it was basically wrestling from beginning to end, and that was something that we all enjoyed watching was, you know, the uh, the information that they had about professional wrestling. They'd give you the card. They'd have the announcers up there. They would have uh, all the, um, you know, stuff coming up in the future, and the angles would build right there on TV and uh, Mid-South was just so fun. Um, what are some of your memories about Mid-South in general that you can remember compared to when you went over to Jim Crockett Promotions in 
Oh, one incident right there in Louisiana, Lafayette, Louisiana. We pulled up to the arena, and there was people lined up, cars lined up. As we get out of the car, the channel, I think it was Channel 3, Channel 5 News, come up to our car and says, who are y'all? Uh-huh. And I, I said, I'm Ricky, this is Robert. They, they go, she, they, she said, no. She said, but what do y'all do? I said, we wrestle. She said, well, my goodness. She said, people have been camping out for two days to buy tickets to win. It's unheard of. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Wow, that's that is it. Two days they were camping out for two days. Yeah, it's it never happened in that town. Holy cow, man, that's insane. I'd tell you, Mid South was a great thing back in the day. You know, eventually it morphed into the UWF, the Universal Wrestling Federation. But you know, some of the stars. I mean, you were three time Mid South Tag Team Champion with your partner Ricky Morton, who we'll have on the show in a little bit here. Um, but the Mid South wrestling matches were so exciting. I mean, you had tag teams like Jake the Snake Roberts and Hercules Hernandez. I remember you also had Ted DiBiase and Hercules Hernandez. Uh, the Midnight Express was there. Dennis Condry and Bobby Eaton. I remember uh, Robert one time on an interview a few years ago. You and I were talking. And I said, you know, how, how, how good was the chemistry between you guys? And you told me, you said, man, I could take Bobby Eaton and I could throw him into a, a, a head scissor and roll down, bring him up to a hip toss, throw him off the rope and do him into an arm drag without even thinking about it. And, uh, yeah, blindfolded, yeah. Yeah, blindfolded, you know, and that's amazing stuff. I mean, explain the chemistry that you guys had with the Rock and Roll Express going back to the Mid-South wrestling days because it was tremendous. Back then, you know, you, you just went there and you wrestled. You know, you just not went in there all high spots. You, you wrestled and, mm-hmm. and you had fun out there. Sometimes it got rough. Mm-hmm. But you know, try to go out there and wrestle and uh, entertain. Did you prefer... Back then, all the guys, you know, they, they, were, they were all good wrestlers. Yes, they were. Yeah, they were. Did you prefer wrestling, and this may be kind of a loaded question here, but did you prefer wrestling the original Midnight Express with Condry and Eaton <clears throat> compared to Stan Lane and uh, Eaton, or did you have a preference of the two? Uh, not really. They all were all great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fantastic matches, I'll tell you what. Now, you know, the Midnight Express are going to be there with you guys. Um, how fun is it getting together with those guys after all these years? Because they're a couple of great guys as well, Eaton and Condry. Yeah, last time I saw was in Charlotte. I hadn't talked to them since then, but I heard they're going to be in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. They'll be there. Yep. I guess I'll see them when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> What's the one thing that you could say to either one of those guys just out of the blue and it would just make you guys start laughing? I mean, is there like a favorite memory or favorite rib or something that you guys can just always remember and just laugh about? It'll make you laugh. Uh, I'll Probably the time we put Cornette's face in that cake. <laughs> you know, TV, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, that was that, that, yeah, it was pretty cool. That was Mid South after they won the tag team titles. You guys came out and shoved his face in there. Who, whose idea was that? Who's, whose thought was to do something like that? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it might have been ours. <laughs> Who knows? Was there ever any tension or jealousy at all between you two teams? Because you were the two hottest teams at that time in Mid-South. And, hell, going into 86 at, in, in Jim Crockett and the NWA, I mean, you guys tore it up. As a matter of fact, I remember you guys sold out, I believe, twice in Charlotte without anybody on the bill like uh, Magnum or Dusty or anybody else like that. Uh, was yeah. there? A, was it always a good feeling with you two teams like we, that? We, we were like rock stars, man. Everywhere we went, we sold out. Yeah. It, was, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I remember the Coliseums didn't have fences in the back. By the time we left there, they don't build, build, build fences to keep people back. <laughs> it, it was crazy. Oh, man, that's great stuff. In case you're just tuning uh, I in. Remember, I remember pulling up the Greensboro Coliseum. It took 45 minutes to get us out of our car. Wow. It was crazy. Is that the after one where that, they that, Is that the one where they had to take you in a helicopter, or was that in Charlotte that they did that? Yeah. That's, when, that's when they blocked the interstate. Yeah. God. Too, too many people in town. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. those days, Robert. Those days are just tremendous. Even in the Crockett days, I remember going to a theme park. You ever heard of Carowinds? Um, no, have not. Um, no, have not. Carowinds, big theme park. It's like Six Flags. Okay. We, we go there with a looking like contest with these two kids. They got to spend the day with us. And... Uh, so we took him to the park. Okay. As we went to the park, we got on the roller coaster, and security came out there and asked us, and said, y'all got to leave the park. Y'all about to close down Carolyn. Oh, really? 
Man, you... uh, a lot of people who saw this park are either at the entrance or the exit. Oh, so we had, we had to climb over the rails and go out the back gate. Oh, my God. So that... Asked us to leave the park. You guys were rock stars, man. You still are rock stars. You guys are still out there kicking butt. It, it, it was crazy. Wow. I tell you, it's going to be fun in Louisiana come April 4th. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Let me read down some of this information, Robert, because uh, I want to talk about this kind of you know verbatim here. Again, it is Friday, April the 4th, Mid-South Legends Fan Fest, the Battle Lines Wrestling Event. It's at the Siger Center, S-I-G-U-R, in Chalmette, Louisiana. Uh, they do have uh, a great website, Mid-South, Re- MidSouthLegends.com. That's MidSouthLegends.com. There's all kinds of different access to there. There's a Platinum VIP. There's a Gold VIP. There's a, a basic general admission type of thing. And I want to read some of these names off. And as I'm reading off these names, just give me like a sentence or two or something of a memory that you have of these people if you could okay okay here we go bill watts tough i'm, I'm sorry to hear that one bill watts tough person to work for tough person to work for okay that's that's good that's honest i like that how about jimmy Cornette? i know he talked about him you've worked with him a million times how about jimmy Jimmy is, uh, I'd say he, he had to learn how to fight in his day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. We already talked about Eaton and Condry, of course, the original Midnight Express there. Uh, we talked about them a little bit, and you and Ricky and uh, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, the Fantastics, will be there. I know that Tommy's flying in from Hawaii, and uh, Bobby's been having some uh, health problems as of late with his eye, uh, partial blindness. Um, what do you remember about the Fantastics? I remember them guys, you know, everywhere we went, they had to come in and try to follow us. And, uh, matter of fact, we, we even gave them some rain jackets to try to help them out get going. Yeah. Two good guys. Good guys. I, I've seen Bobby recently. It'd be good to see Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, you know, Tommy's kind of like falling off the face of the earth, man. It seems like no one knows what happened to him. Yeah, he disappeared. He ducked the clothesline. <laughs> He took the close line. I like that. We're talking to Robert Gibson right here on Off the Top Rope Radio with Brian Shank here from the Rock and Roll Express, uh, one of the greatest tag teams ever. When I say that, I mean I, I really mean this. I mean I, you know, you can always talk about the talent you have on your shows and stuff like this, but when you watch a Rock and Roll Express tag team match, and even like the Midnight Express and whatnot back in those days, I mean. It was tag team personified. I mean, it was just the, the, the psychology, the chemistry, the building up of the, the matches, uh, the heat involved, um, the referee knockdowns, I mean, the hot tags. I mean, everything about the matches back in those days were tremendous. And you could watch. It kept you on the, it kept you on the edge of your seat. Without a doubt. And, and, and it, like yeah. you said earlier, it was because it was professional wrestling, you know? That's good, yeah. good stuff. And always, you know, on behalf of a lot of the fans, there, thank you for all the great matches you've given us, too. So, I well, uh, sure appreciate it. Yeah. Let me give you a couple more names here before we let you go because I know we're going to get Ricky on here in a few minutes as well. But uh, did you work a lot around Kamala, James Harris? Because we had James on a couple weeks ago. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, what are your thoughts and memories about Kamala? Man, he's a uh, super, super, super individual. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always got along with Kamala. Yeah. It's a good worker. What he did, sure was. Yeah, for his size yeah. and everything. Yeah, good guy. Nothing, nothing bad. Nothing good things to say about Kamala. There you go. A couple more names really quick. I'll just read them off, and I'll be able to get one or two for you. Uh, Mr. Olympia, Jerry Stubbs, Bill Superstar, Dundee, Mr. Wrestling 2, Bushwhacker, Luke, Port Chop, Cash, and Dark Journey round off this fantastic Mid-South Legends uh, for this event on Friday, April 4th at the Siger Center in Chalmette. Go to MidSouthLegends.com for all your ticket information and whatnot because this is what it's all about. And at the end of the show, after we talk to Ricky, we'll read more about this. And you're going to be involved in a match that evening, too, uh, tag team match. Match, uh, you and of course Ricky Morton taking on genetic perfection with Rich Rose in their corner. Do you guys know anything about genetic perfection? You have any any uh, any kind of like plans or? Uh, sure, I guess I better start looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember, I remember when I first started in, in this career, in my business, in this career, I, I used to be excited about that. But heck, seems like I forgot more than, than, than most people already know. So you got that right. I guess. I guess all I can do is like they used to tell me is just lace them up tight. Mm-hmm. 
Is there anything that you see on the independent circuit when you travel? Because you told me off the air that you're pretty much going every single weekend somewhere. Is there anything that really kind of bothers you about some of the newer guys that are involved in like you know, the independents and stuff, some of the younger guys? Is there anything that bothers you that they do, whether it be not working correctly, not doing this, not doing that? Is there something that just you know doesn't make you very happy? Well, not, not, not that it really upsets me. Just It's weird you go to these other places and you hear people call – certain moves, certain things, I'm thinking, wow, they ain't what we used to call it. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got different names for different moves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's just because, they, you know, some of them were trained with people, you know, to, to get a different name for a move, evidently whoever told you that name didn't know what that move was in the first place. Right. Yeah. No, I, I hear you there. I hear you there. Well, before we go, Robert, how about a little, a uh, few words out there for all the wrestling fans out there who are listening right now to your voice and, uh, just a, just a couple comments or some things for the wrestling fans. Yeah, fans out there. Hey, this is Robert Gibson with the Rock and Roll Express, and uh, it's good to, it's good to have a chance to scout out there and say everybody hello. Hope everybody, everybody's having a good year. And if you're able to come down in Louisiana April fourth, uh, come down and check us out. Cool. And I know you're very accommodating on your Facebook page. It is really you, Robert Gibson. If you want anybody to go out there and join you as a friend, you're always welcome to have the fans out there follow you and. Uh, it's always interesting to read your updates about your beautiful lady out there and all the things that you do. And keep it up, stay healthy, and I'm sure I'll see you in New Orleans. I'm going to try to get on down for this event. Okay, man. Drop kick, keep rocking. You got it, buddy. Drop kick, keep rocking. I like that. Okay, thank you, Robert. You have a good day, buddy. See you, buddy. All right. Bye. There you go. Robert Gibson for the Rock and Roll Express. Good interview there. We're glad to have him check in and see what he's all about. And I know that he obviously loves the fans out there who welcome him each and every time he goes out to the cities. And if you get a chance, check it out, MidSouthLegends.com. After the Ricky Mort interview, we're going to talk more about that particular event in detail and how you can get involved in the Mid-South Legends reunion. April the 4th, Friday night, should be tremendous. We're coming right back with an interview from the other half of the Rock and Roll Express, Mr. Ricky Morton. Don't go away. When you visit Hill Family Dentistry in Santan Valley, dentist Dr. Tim Hill provides each patient with personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you and your family with services that will make you smile. With a full range of general, cosmetic, and specialty dentistry services that will keep you and your family smiling, our commitment to our community is to provide outstanding oral health. Hill Family Dentistry is located on 36359 Gansell Road in Santan Valley, diagonally across from Banner Ironwood Hospital. Evening and weekend appointments available. We accept most insurances and have in-office policies available for non-insured. Contact us today at 480-588-8127. Hill Family Dentistry. More music, 24 hours a day. Another day, just believe, another day, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe. Ami Hazard here. Catch the buzz on the Random Affair Show every other Sunday discussing random topics on health, fashion, music, art, and life with local and national guests. Check the calendar on kqcklive.com for dates. Hi, Marie here for WannaSing.com. Are you looking for professional DJ or karaoke services for your next holiday party or get-together? WannaSing.com can provide the best in sound, lighting, and a professional MC to host your next event. Whether it be a company party, birthday party, wedding, or any occasion, WannaSing.com is ready to provide the fun and make it a night to remember for years to come. Call 480-664-8801. That's 480 480- 664-8801 Mention this radio ad and receive a special discount for your next fun event. WannaSing.com All right, we're back here at Off the Top Rope Radio on KQCK. Heard exclusively on KQCK.com. Brian Shank hanging with you here on Off the Top Rope Radio. We've had a pretty good show here so far. Doug McDonald from WrestlingRumors.net. Check this out. 
gave us all the information of what's happening in the wrestling world. We spoke to one half of the Rock and Roll Express, Mr. Robert Gibson, a moment ago. And now it's time to bring on the other half, Mr. We're going to speak to uh, Mr. Ricky Morton here, live from his home in, well, we'll call it down south somewhere. Mr. Ricky Morton, welcome off the Top Rope Radio, buddy. How you doing? Nah, I'm doing great, man. Uh, uh, I'm up here at... You just say where I saw him up here in Bristol, Tennessee, man. Oh, Bristol, Tennessee. I, I didn't want to give away too much information. I don't want the kids knocking down well, the Well, that's all right. I'm up here. Yeah, I, I love Bristol, but, you know, I enjoy the four seasons, but all in one week, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> we, we done had sunshine, snow, ice, and now it's back to 80 degrees again, okay? Oh, oh my God. You know, I tell you, being out here in Phoenix, Arizona, south of Phoenix anyway, uh, we've had consistently great 80-degree weather here pretty much the last two months, and I've been reading and just listening and hearing all the reports of the horrible weather changes up there, and even you know down south in like Atlanta and Florida, just just it, it, amazing how it just switched so bad. It's crazy. Yeah, man, I'm a – but you know, got to deal with it, man. Got to deal with it. Know, <laughs> Well, you're moving around so much, Ricky, it doesn't really matter. You don't stay in one place too much. You're pretty busy, I know that. And uh, we do welcome you here to Off the Top Rope Radio. Brian Shank hanging here with Ricky Morton, one half of one of the greatest tag teams ever, the Rock and Roll Express, and we're pleased to have you on. You know, we're talking Mid-South Wrestling, and we had Robert Gibson on a moment ago, your longtime tag team partner, and uh, Mid-South Legends Fan Fest, Friday, April the 4th, in Chalmette, Louisiana, at the Seigert Center. Man, this is going to be tremendous. I read off some of the names a moment ago with Robert, but... uh, what are you looking forward to the most about this uh, reunion with all the guys and the girls? Well, it's not only that, man. You know, it's been a long time. And, yeah. You know, at one point back in the 80s, you know, Robert and I was a real hot commodity down in Louisiana. Huge. You know, all that, you know, matter of fact, we were the first ones that ever wrestled in Superdome before, before uh, poor paper you came along. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, looking at some of the, seeing all the fans and still remember us, man. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I know you're always big with your fans out there. I know the Rock and Roll Express is a true, legit fan favorite tag team. I mean, you've Robert was talking about you know some of the highways being closed off. He talked about the amusement park that you guys were at. I I forgot the name of it. He mentioned it uh, where they asked you I guys. Carolines. Uh, Car- yeah. Over in North Carolina. Yeah, it sure <laughs> was. We had a look uh, a Rock and Roll Express a lookalike contest winners, and uh, the winners we uh, we were gonna. You know, take to Carowinds, but uh-huh. uh, but the fan base people, you know, they <laughs> they made us leave. <laughs> so, you know, but they brought us back when the park was closed. Oh. So that was good. That's anyway. that's amazing, man. I'll tell you what, you know, going through something like that where you guys are as big as the Beatles. You know, we talked about it too earlier. You know, the Houston Coliseum, for instance, when they. Um, had people like the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix and I mean you go back to Elvis Presley you know the Houston Coliseum where you had some great tag team matches I was watching one today Ricky uh, you and Robert back in 85 against Jake the Snake Roberts and Nord the Barbarian I mean uh, talk about a hot crowd back in those days you guys were definitely rock stars man well may I say well at the time we was rock stars and didn't know it but <laughs> you know that that had to be before 1985 I would imagine with the Barbarian I mean with the Jake the Snake in the it might have been early out eighty five. I think it was because we didn't go into Carolinas until like July of eighty five. So I'm probably wrong on that. Yeah, the I match. Apologize. No, no, the, the match. I think the match said June twenty first or something of eighty five. I think it was just before you went over to Crockett. Yes, you know, and I really, uh, I really enjoyed the Mid South area. You know, you got to understand uh, in those days that was before all the big. You know, like you do now. You know, mm-hmm. it's a, it was a territory that Bill Watts owned. Mm-hmm. And understand, back in those days, man, we, you only had one interstate that went <laughs> <laughs> went east and west. You know, <laughs> but when you, uh, you know, like, a, you know, you going up north, like towards Arkansas and back down, you know, like Baton Rouge, Shreveport. You know, there's only two lane roads back then. Right. Uh, hard territory, but man, what a what a memorable territory we. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it there a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. Learned a lot. Had a lot of you know a lot of things there that you know, especially being there with Junkyard Dog, uh, oh, yeah. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. You know, a lot of guys there, man. That mm-hmm. you know, you came good friends, and some you lost. Yeah, but uh, a lot of memorable times. Butch Reed was another great guy out there, like you mentioned, and Ted DiBiase. I mean, you guys had some great matches against uh, DiBiase, and I know that Hercules Hernandez at one time. As a matter of fact, I think you. Didn't you either lose or win the cha- tag team championships to DiBiase and uh, Hercules in Mid South? Uh, I 
think we did. But yeah. I can't remember. I know. I, I you, know uh, <laughs> you, you know, I'm not trying to be rude or not. You know, Robert and I are still very active in business. Oh, yeah. And understand, I, I know that we're older, but what the fans don't understand and what a lot, you know, we never took time off. You know, mm-hmm. wrestling's all we ever knew in our life. But right. Both of us grew up in wrestling families. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like if we're a tag team here, we took off 20 years and try to, or 10 years, say, and try to come back and wrestle. You know, it's, it's not the same. The timing's not right and all that. Right. But Rob and I are still very active, buddy. I mean, we still, uh, oh, yeah. matter of fact, we still go like we did 1985. But, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I was going to bring that up because Robert told me before the interview that you guys are going every single week, and I was actually going to bring that up and talk about how busy your guys' schedule is, and plus you're having a tag team match at the event, uh, and he said he's going to do some research on ger- on genetic perfection, the tag team of that night that you're going to be facing. So uh, how, how different is it now, Whether you know, just besides being older like we all get every year, but uh, what's the difference now to what it was like back in the day? Do you find it easier to enjoy yourselves in there with all, without all the pressure? and the TV and stuff like that, or is it? Uh, do you still get nervous and the goose fl- goosebumps and everything else before the matches? Well, no matter what you ever do, every time you go to the ring, you get nervous. Yeah. All the thing different is, and I'm not. And understand me, I'm doing a radio interview here. Sure. And I'm not out here to in, to insult anybody's intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our business is a good business. It's a hard business. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm not saying nothing about the guys that we wrestling there. But you just ask me because how is it these days? Uh. You know, the, some of the guys, especially when you're on the independent circuit, you know, back in our days, like to be a watch territory. If you didn't know how to wrestle, buddy, you wasn't there. Right. Uh, if you didn't know everything. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I go to wrestling matches like going on a blind tape. <laughs> I, I never know what I'm going to get. <laughs> but but understand me, I, I still enjoy it because you see uh, these young kids, man, out there, you know, and I hear this a lot, old school, new school. But to me, it's it's not old school or new school. New school. It's called the right way. Uh, we work a lot with these guys. You know, no matter no matter what, dude, we still uh, go out there and give everybody a hundred percent of what we got. Well, I mean, no matter if, I, if they, in my terms, I say green. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some of the guys will be green, but we but we can overcome that because you know, uh, you know, after being in the ring so many times, you know, and you know, you know, I try to figure up of the other day, you know, I will, you know, I probably had close to 10,000 wrestling matches. Really? And I was, uh, beg your pardon? I said, really? 10,000? Yeah, I mean, buddy, you got to understand this. I've been wrestling for almost 40 years. I know, I know. You know, uh, and, uh, but I understand, I'm, <laughs> when the people come to see me, I still, I mean, I, it's, that rock and roll thing is still there, and, you know, looking forward to coming to Louisiana, man. I'm looking forward to, <laughs> Have me some of that Cajun food, I can tell you that. <laughs> That's what Robert said. He said the same thing. He's like, man, anybody see the see the fans eat some of that Cajun food? <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding, man. You know, I'm, I'm you know, trying. It's a big thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have the schedule here in front of me, you know, and I know you read it off one time before. But run off some of the people that's going to be scheduled there. Absolutely, that day for me. Yeah, I've got I got a full schedule right here in front of me. I was gonna you must be you must be peeking at my paper, man, because you were gonna talk. I was gonna talk about your full schedule. Now you're doing this. I, you must have ESP or something, man. This is amazing. But let me go ahead and read this off. Oh, there's gonna be uh, okay. there's gonna be uh, two different autograph signings. Uh, the first one at eleven o'clock will be you and your uh, you and your tag team partner Robert Gibson, the Midnight Express, Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry, Jimmy Cornette, the Fantastics, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, and superstar Bill Dundee. Then there'll be photo opportunities with Mr. Wrestling 2, Jerry Stubbs, which is Mr. Olympia, uh, Dark Journey, Pork Chop Cash, Sheep Herder Luke, Cowboy Bill Watts, Kamala with Friday, and then in the second autograph signing, around 2 o'clock, we'll have Cowboy Bill Watts, Kamala, uh, Dark Journey, Pork Chop Cash, like we talked about, and then the big event later on that night, you'll be involved in a tag team championship. Oh, I should say maybe it's not a tag team championship, but genetic perfection. So a lot of great names right there, Ricky. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of great names, but I want to understand. You know, when when this comes down there, and you know, and all this together, and it's, you know, not only it's good for us, mm-hmm. but it's good for the fans. Uh, you know, we did one in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a lot more over there, and man, I'm telling you, the fans, and not only the fans, but all the boys, we had a great time. I know we're gonna have a dinner one night where mm-hmm. you have fans sitting at the table eating with us. Yep. You know, and it's a lot of people up talking and 
and having a good time and and you know what and I enjoyed myself and I you know I was talking to Robert the other day I'm I'm just looking forward to being down there you know and I'm gonna be down in uh but down here in a couple of weeks uh, we got next weekend okay I'm gonna be at Crawfish Festival so I wanted everybody to, to know that I will be down there uh, promoting the show uh, nice looking forward to a lot of the fans down there too uh, and you know fiddling them in on what they got to look forward to because. Guys, understand me. It's only once in a lot of time event that mm-hmm. will probably happen. Yeah, no, you're right about that. That this is going to be a tremendous array of talent. And in case you're just tuning into the show, everybody on Off the Top Rope Radio, right here on KQCK, we're speaking to Ricky Morton, one half of the Rock and Roll Express, three time Mid South Tag Team Champion. Since we're talking about the Mid South and everything else, and you mentioned something about the dinner, um, and not to correct you, of course, but it's a they consider this a breakfast of champions. Q&A with the Rock and Roll Express, the Midnight Express, Jim Cornette, and superstar Bill Dundee. That's around 9.30 or so before the autograph signings take place. So to sit down and break bread with some of these great teams and names like that and pick your brain, I mean, that's got to be a, a dream come true for the diehard wrestling fans of Mid-South. That's tremendous. You know, especially with us, with the Midnight Express and yeah. Jimmy Cornette. Oh, God. That's something that- that's something that nobody's seen, and yeah. you know, and, and being there with him, I, I don't know if you really know Jimmy Cornette like I do. No, of course not. Uh, Jimmy is uh, when it comes to a verbal fight, <laughs> you're, you're not going to win. Even you with know what I'm saying, <laughs> uh, Jimmy is is going to be there, but you know, it's going to be questions, and I want the fans to know that you come yeah. in and ask anything. Yeah, uh, our business has changed. Yeah, uh, and, and and to understand this some of the things that we went through and things that we've done and, you know, and understanding, you know, we're not like, and understanding to, to accomplish a lot, guys. We mm-hmm. didn't sell out arenas once a year. You know what I'm saying? We right. didn't go to places once a year. Right. We went to them every week. Yep. And, uh, and to understand what we did mm-hmm. and how we had to, you know, to keep the attention of all our fans was such a long time. I mean, yeah. that's something that, uh, some of the secrets are our business that I, I know the fans are going to be asking, and I'm ready to answer all those questions. That's great. You know, and that's, that's good that you say that. It's very cool of you because I know some people say, well, I won't talk about this, or, you know, next question, please. I like how you said, hey, just come with what you got. I'll answer it. I'll, if I don't have an answer, I'll tell you I don't, but just bring it to the table, and, and that's great. That's awesome. What's what? Let me ask you a question, Ricky. What's the weirdest question maybe that anybody has ever asked you about the wrestling business? What what was a question you took and you were just like, wow, where'd that come from? Or, my gosh, I don't have an answer for that. Wow. Uh, man, you know, you caught me off guard. <laughs> Sorry. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I've done so many radio interviews. I know, and I know. And, and with, with the fans, you know, I, I did one, one, one night with some lady, and, man, I thought I was talking to Nancy Grace. <laughs> I mean, boy, she was pounding me about, <laughs> about different things. And, you know, and... <laughs> Finally, got you know. I just told her. I said, "You have to loosen up here, lady." I mean, I, I'm trying to answer your question, but you keep going back. You know, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Yeah. yeah you know, uh, yeah. it's like a joke. You right. know, I, I, I like to tell jokes, but something has to remind me yeah. of something that happened. Yeah. Before I could say it, yeah. before it comes out, and uh, I apologize on that. Yeah. But you no, know, I've I done it all. I mean, I seen. Uh, I mean, I know you heard a lot of stories about the Rock and Roll Express, and. Uh, I promise you, ninety nine point nine of them are probably true, but okay. but we enjoyed ourselves, man. I enjoyed this business. I still still enjoy it. You know, I, I had such a great time, even though working with the younger kids. Yeah, uh, it's not. You know, we have seminars and stuff where we train. Uh, you know, we go in and speak with and speak to them and everything. It's like you know, I can't make you a WWE star, but mm-hmm. we can understand it to to have great matches on the independent circuit to make you better, or maybe even give you a chance to do that. Uh, but my main thing is, is uh, you know, after the life I live, is to making kids understand how to make good decisions. And I, I think that's very important, not only in our business, but outside the business, too. Very cool. All right, time to play five quick, fast questions. This is where you just answer something really quick off the top of your head, and then we'll end the interview with this because it's always fun. I'm just going to give you some real quick questions. You just come up with the first thing that pops in your head. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. If I could meet one person, whether they're dead or they're alive, right now, and spend five minutes with them face to face, that person would be. That was Presley. Ah, I like it. I like it. 
What would you say to Elvis? What I would say to Elvis? Yeah, what would you say to him in those five minutes? Just maybe what would you, what would you talk well, about? Yeah, uh, well, what would we talk about? You know, dude, I'm not trying to hide any secrets. <laughs> you know, I, know what I, I know what I did in this wrestling business. Uh -huh. And that would be the first thing I'd ask him. <laughs> you know, you're Elvis Presley, dude. You got to fill me in, man. <laughs> right. I, I like it. I like it. That's good. That's honest. I, I appreciate it. Okay, question number two. Um, there's one person or a tag team that we never got a chance to wrestle, whether it was because it was after our career, you know, in the, in the 80s or whatever else, you know, during that time, you know, maybe like a future team. If there's one tag team that you could have wrestled that you never did or a singles wrestler, who would that person or people be? Okay, uh, you know, it'll be a single match. It it it'd been uh, Bruno Sammartino. Nice, nice. Yes. Wow, Bruno Sammartino and Ricky Morton. That'd be freaking great. I'd love to see that. Yes, I, I would like to wrestle him. I, you know, understand me a lot. We put a lot of guys in this business. I know we done. We go back to the questions here in a minute. A lot of people do not understand and never did history in, a, in our, on our professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, they just want to be wrestlers. I, all the time I ask them, do they know anybody? Know this person. They never even heard of him. But I studied Bruno San Martino. I, uh, you know, I studied the part when he was there in WWF, and uh, I enjoyed some of the stuff he did. Especially I enjoyed a lot of his interviews. Oh, yeah. He was great. Uh, great talent. One of the greatest world champions of all time to, se to sell out Madison Square Garden as many times as he did. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was a fantastic talent. Okay, question number three. You know, I, I remember, and I'm, I, I'm going to say this. I yeah. remember one thing, he, and this always stays in my mind, and I love this. Yeah. He was doing an interview, and this is back when our business was real sacred. And, uh, and the guy, right in front of everybody, TV and everything, he goes, all right, will you put your hand on this Bible and swear that the wrestling business is not fake? Okay, <laughs> he says I will if you put your hand on that Bible and swear you never cheated on your wife. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> wow! Oh yeah! <clears throat> Did the yeah. guy do it? Uh, no, he didn't. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Oh, I could just see Bruno doing that too. Wow! Oh yeah. He you know, and I, I don't think I would have ever, I don't think I would have ever asked Bruno San Martino to do something like that because I'd be afraid of what he would have maybe physically done to me because that's just maybe out of bounds like that. But that that's funny stuff. Okay, let's move well, on. Thing, yeah. But, you know, these reporters are trying to oh, yeah. make a name for this episode. Yeah. All right, next question. Yeah, wrestling uh, number three here out of five. Number three, what is the weirdest item or thing that you ever signed with your autograph for a fan? Weirdest thing you ever signed. You know, uh, I could name a lot, a lot of them, but one of them was a was a van, a van, a rock and roll, a rock and roll van. Nice. The guy that this band owned. And uh, matter of fact, we signed it, and the guy went and had it airbrushed over the top of where I signed it, the same way, uh -huh. and uh, had, had it clear coated for it never come off. Oh. And uh, and that was what I just one that sticks out. But I signed everything. Yeah, I bet you so. have. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you have. Okay, let me give you another couple, uh, two more here. The wrestler that, and, and this this may not even have an answer. So if it doesn't have an answer, or you say, well, nobody, then just you know, we'll move on to another one. But the wrestler or person that I have been mistaken for is Ric Flair. Yeah, but you know that, that's just because of my hair. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, the looks. It's just because of my hair. And my name, you know, and especially the younger kids in this, that really didn't know Flair me either. You know, I, I walk into places and they say, there's Ricky, he's the <laughs> professional wrestler, you know, and the little kids, Rick Flair, Rick Flair. <laughs> you know, and it's not because I wore the suit or anything. Yeah. It's just because of the name. Oh, yeah. I remember the funny story. And the blonde hair. Yeah, and the blonde hair. Yeah. I still got a mullet. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> You do have the greatest right. mullet I've ever seen. You you have and still ha you had and still have the greatest mullet I've ever seen. No one can rock the mullet well, like Ricky Morton. Well, you know I'm the hello. I'm the last uh, last one with the wrestler's mullet. I, I know. Guess. I know. I don't see anybody else wearing one. But that's great. That means you're one of a kind, man. You're one of a kind. Well, no, you know somebody asked me before. Is uh, besides that, my wife will let me cut my hair anyway. Uh -oh. But uh, I. Uh, Somebody tell me they said, "Man, would you cut your hair?" I said, "Dude, if I do, I won't be Ricky Morton no more." <laughs> you know, yeah. 
And if they're telling yeah. you that, if they're telling you that, they don't even know that you are Ricky Morton. So I mean, come on yeah, now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, last oh, question. Okay. Last question for you, since we are talking, of course, Mid South. The absolute coolest, greatest, nicest, friendliest, most awesome wrestler that I ever hung around with in the Mid South days was. I guess junkyard dog. There you go, JYD baby. Grab them cakes. Sylvester, you know, he man, he was. A man of different, a lot of different characters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, he was, uh, you know, Junkyard Dog, man. You know, not only was he a great talent in the ring, but, man, he kept the locker room going, mm-hmm. kept the boys going. We had a lot of long trips. I, you know, I miss him a lot. He was yeah. a good friend of mine, man. Yeah. Tell yeah. you a great story. Yes, please. Mind, no, uh, please, please do. You know, you're talking about Mr. Wrestler, you know, to Johnny Walker mm-hmm. being a, uh, there, and you got to understand, I bet, like I said earlier, our business was real sacred. Our business was something we defended, something we stood for. I was there in Louisiana for a year. Worked with Johnny Walker many a times, wrestler too. Worked with him many a times. Spoke to him, but I never seen him without his mask. And that was a, that's a shoot. Never seen him without his mask. Wow. So uh, I was shopping, and I was off one day. It was all off. There in Pineville, Louisiana, where we lived at, I was at Walmart, and I'm shopping, and this gentleman walked up to me and had no clue. Uh, and he started talking to me, and I'm thinking, that's somebody else's voice, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it was, it was Johnny Walker. Wow. I never seen him without his mask before. That's totally funny. Totally surprised me, threw me completely off, knocked me off my feet. That's funny. And that's a true story. Wow. It sure is. That's funny. That's kind of like a blind man getting his sight back and not knowing that the apple in front of him is actually the apple because he's never seen it before. You know, that's just, uh, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, oh. Oh, it, it just, it really, you know, it surprised me. I mean, it, got, it freaked me out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Johnny Walker, that's you. Well, Ricky Morton, I got to tell you, man, it's been a great interview with you like it always is. We always appreciate when you come on to Off the Top Rope Radio. I, I always feel assured that when I call you on your phone and I say, hey, it's Brian from Off the Top Rope here in Arizona, you're always like, how you doing, buddy? It's always good to hear your voice, and you're always very good to us yeah. out here. You know, Thank you, man. I appreciate it. No, that. it's true. I mean, it's true. It, it's like it's you never like. I'm a friend out there honky talk. I said hi if you run into him. You know, he's only about 35 minutes down the road from where I'm at. And, and oh, I've, he? yeah, I've told him to get his ass in the studios a couple of times, and you know he was doing his own radio show for a while there on, at his home, and uh, we kind of lost yeah. touch a little bit. But you know, I, I know Wayne quite well. He's he's a great guy. He's funnier than hell, man. He's just he's yeah, a, oh, yeah. he's a sure stitch. Is. He'll yeah, have just one of the boys. One of the boys, All indeed. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, Ricky, we're gonna we're gonna talk uh, after I hang up with you. We're gonna talk a bit more in verbatim about the uh, fan fest coming up. But once again, fans, don't forget Friday, April the fourth, the Mid South Fan Fest. It's gonna be fantastic. The Battle Lines Wrestling Event. The Tiger Center in Chalmette, Louisiana, and Ricky, I'm about 95% sure I'm coming out there, so when I do, we're going to have oh, to... Oh, man, you got, you, you got to make that 100% sure, because we're going to have a great time. We will, buddy. Me and you will crack a few beers together. Right? We're going to have a great time. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll buy, a ca- right. we'll buy a case of beer. Me, you, and Robert can split that. I think we can probably put those down, right? Well, I mean, what are y'all going to drink? <laughs> okay, I'll get, oh. I'll get two cases. I'll get two cases. <laughs> All right, man. All right, buddy. You take care, Ricky. Good talking to you, buddy. All right, there you go. Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express right there joining us on Off the Top Rope Radio. It's always a great uh, time to speak with him, and, and it's just it, it's just fun because he's always about wrestling, like he said in his interview. He, this is what he does. This is what he's about, and this is exactly what he enjoys doing still to this day after 40 years in the business. When he said 40 years, I was like, damn, you know what? He's about right because, you know, he's been in there a long time, man, and been involved in some of the greatest wrestling promotions around, and he's always fun and always a great person to talk to. Him and Robert both, we thank the Rock and Roll Express there, talk some great Mid-South professional wrestling. And I want to read this here before we go because we had some emails. People were asking in between the uh, breaks there. They were sending emails saying, can you please talk more about what we can actually expect and whatnot? I says, absolutely. I got it right here. So just going to read this off really quick here. This is the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest, Friday, April 4th, the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest Battle Lines Wrestling Event. 
It's at the Siger Center in Chalmette, Louisiana. Check them out at MidSouthLegends.com. Uh, now, here's some here's some information about the professional wrestling event you're going to see and all the things that you can purchase. The Fan Fest tickets can be purchased at MidSouthLegends.com only. Okay, you can't buy them there or anything else. You got to buy them at the website. So please make sure you check that out again. MidSouthLegends.com. Also, if you do that, no tickets or lanyards will be mailed out. They'll all be available at the will call window the day of the show. And there are going to be a couple different packages here. There's going to be a Platinum VIP All Access. It's $149. So if you were planning on buying like uh, something, you know what? Blow it on this because this is really cool. Listen to what you get. You get early admittance, two free autographs from each featured legend, um, access to all the Q&A sessions, coffee talk with the stars, a Cajun dinner with the stars, and that's the thing that Ricky Morton was talking about, uh, the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest t-shirt, a Mid-South Legends Fan Fest program, ringside seats for the Battle Lines live wrestling matches, a DVD of the Battle Lines live wrestling matches with bonus footage of the Q&A sessions, the interviews, and more. Those we mailed out to you after the event about 30 days afterwards, and a neck lanyard, so that's 149 bucks. That's a lot of stuff to get for a buck fifty right there. The Gold VIP is access to all the, access to all the Q&A sessions, the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest and Program, the ringside seats for the Battle Lines live event wrestling matches, and you can also just go in there for access only to the Fan Fest for $19. Um, these tickets are available at the Siger Center box office and at MidSouthLegends.com, so it looks like they did make a little change in this. You can buy them up, up close and personal as well. Um, eight, Okay, and there, there's a little bit of a schedule here. I'm not going to read off verbatim the times and whatnot, but there's going to be photo opportunities. We talked about the Breakfast of Champions with the different people, the different photo opportunities. There's going to be a JYD Memorial Cup Battle Royal. The inaugural JYD Battle Cup Battle Royal will feature wrestlers from at least eight different wrestling organizations, a six-man tag team match, The Empire, which is Matt Riviera, Tim Storm, and Greg, and Anth- Greg Anthony, managed by the lovely and vivacious and still sexy Dark Journey, taking on Tommy Dreamer, Americos, and Scott Phoenix, a special challenge match. The Pope, Elijah Burke, will be there, taking on Steve Anthony, a grudge match with Chris Adonis. He used to be known as the masterpiece Chris Masters. He'll be there, taking on Lance Hoyt. That should be a good match. Mickey James, ow, she looks great, and Angelina Love, ow, one for her, too. That'll be fun. They're great, great wrestlers, both of them. Uh, very sexy and very good wrestlers. Uh, superstar Bill Dundee taking on King Shane Williams. Also scheduled to wrestle in tag team action like we talked about earlier, the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson taking on genetic perfection with Rich Rose in their corner. John Saxon and Vordell Walker versus Sigmund and Kincaid with Roosevelt and Boyd Bradford in their corner. The card is subject to change, but just in case you want to know that. So check out all the information, MidSouthLegends.com. It's right here, and it's going to be a fantastic event. Friday, April the 4th, the year 2014. This is WrestleMania 30 weekend as well, so it'll be all kind of in the same facility area there. Not the same facility, but in the same kind of global area. They're not too far from each other. So this will be a great, great match, a great, great event a great great i like saying great when it comes to mid-south wrestling because of one of my favorite wrestling organizations to have ever existed and um we read the names off earlier get on out and check it out please get there if you can and we want to thank you the wrestling fans for always being a part of this wrestling show today and just being big fans of everything involved in professional wrestling i know the people from mid-south thank you my good buddy mike weber who's doing a lot of things out there thanks you and i know that we're going to have a great time checking this all out thank and you we'll talk to you next time fans for listening to today's show we would love to hear from you away from the airwaves so we invite you to like our facebook page at off the top rope radio And any emails you want to send, please send them directly to me at brian, B-R-I-A-N, at kqckradio.com. We'll talk to you next week right here on KQCK Radio, USA, Costa Rica.